So, first topic, how different is current day compared to, let's say, beginning of the 2010s for you? I don't remember much of 2010. Like, I'm saying, like, the 20, like, early 2010s are, like, 2011, 2012. Yeah. Um, I remember, I, I remember specifically, is it in 2011, I think it was. I, I think I need to check this real quick, but I'm pretty sure 2010 or 2011, the, the first Thor movie came out. I remember when that first came out, I was in, I'm wanting to say... I'm wanting to say first grade, first or second grade, mm-hmm. which think about it, that's it's weird, because we're like now in like tenth grade, about to go into eleventh grade. Yeah, but um, I remember uh, that was the first time I ever uh, skipped school to go watch a Marvel movie. <laughs> hmm. And there was like that during that time, everything was so simple. Like you didn't need to worry about anything. You didn't understand money problems. You didn't have to worry about social classes. You just kind of got along, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, so you don't remember anything particular in the early two, 2010s decade? I remember that back then was when I uh, really started getting into like um comic books and stuff because I lived in the middle of nowhere and um, I was only like seven yeah that makes sense Uh, what was Um, it like living in the middle of nowhere well it was fun because there was woods behind my house and I remember I had I built my own like little tree fort and I bring my comic books out there and then read them all and uh yeah, and we raised chickens. Uh, I had my own room down in like the basement, which was really cool. Oh, okay. For me, I lived in a condo up in um, uh, Knick area. Mm. I lived in uh, Paula Pines, California. Yeah, you were telling me about that when we first met. Well, uh, what well, is it true? The weather truly hot as hell in California. Oh, yeah, but the schools were also way more, like, insane than they are here because uh, if we got even a foot of snow there, uh, they canceled school. Sounds like an absolute win, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And from what I'm hearing, they're canceling school, like, nearly every single day for the past year. Yep. Because, you know, forest fires, that one drunk guy walking in, and what is this now, some shitty beer disease? Mm-hmm. We can't say the actual name, otherwise we get the video deleted. <laughs> yeah, we're yeah we, we literally can't say the name of it, <laughs> which is which is stupid well, uh, in my opinion. Paul's Pines was a really good place. Like, I'd like to visit sometime in the future. Um, the school I went to was also horrendous. The teachers were assholes. Um. Uh, it's like, you don't go somewhere to experience the people. You go there to experience the environment. Yep, but the only good play, uh, thing about that school that I remember was the fucking lunches, dude. Like, they were homemade. Ooh. They were so good. Lately, uh, our school lunches have been getting better quality for some reason. Oh, because um, Michelle Obama pulled out uh, in the program that um restricted the it. healthy food program is that what it was yes yeah, she, okay she's no longer doing that yeah i think nice we get freedoms <laughs> but uh i remember uh i was always the giant of elementary school yeah like the early 2010s like everyone was like a foot shorter than me because I was, like, near, like, 5'8 already. And it was, like, 4th grade. <laughs> it, was, it was weird being me, though. But, um... 
around m- mid 2010s, early to like around 2013, 2014 times, I uh, I discovered what the social classes were and the cool kids and the factions of schools. Like I, yeah. I discovered that, and it, eh, it kind of it kind of ruined social interaction for me. What about you? Well, back in elementary school, I was the kind of kid that would just vibe on the swing set and just uh, read a book or a comic or something. Or play on my DS. I remember back when that was my thing. Dude, and, DS uh, is worth the stuff, man. I had a PSP DS. I remember like one time in kindergarten, actually, I got in trouble for bringing my... Uh, Hand me down PSP I got from my brother, and I was playing God of War in kindergarten. You know, I think that's a good reason for them to yell at you, though. Because <laughs> you know, you're a kindergartner seeing the blood being spilled of Greek. It was a fun game. Yeah, you can, yeah, that's true. But um, I'd say, okay, so the D, the DS or the 3DS, that was like the big thing of about. About 2015-2016 time. Mm-hmm. Sure, the console, the uh, next gen consoles released already, but it didn't really like matter because all everyone was about was the DS and the Mario games and Mario Kart. Like that was that yeah. was the thing. Um, I went to a charter school for fourth and fifth grade, so you were banned from wearing shirts that had designs on them. Wearing um, uh, you you were not allowed to wear uh, shorts. You weren't allowed to wear anything other than sneakers, not even boots. You weren't allowed Dang. to have any electronics, and you weren't. Uh, you also got in trouble for speaking about video games or anything. Mm-hmm. These are really strict school, and also very poor, like very poor teaching ethic. Mm-hmm. It's like I, I I went in there for fourth and fifth grade, and I left there with probably some fourth grade knowledge about the core subjects. Yeah. The the more things that they focus on it was how a tree is a tree because of the way it is, and how to paint. Mm-hmm. And I'm telling you right now, the paint thing didn't stick well. Because there's like some weird watercolor where they give you like a really terrible brush. And then you have to, like, the hand create the pigment paint, too. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Teacher was really uptight, and I had uh, had to deal with her for two years in a row. Are we just uh, practicing our commentary, or or are we already recording? I'm just going with whatever happens. Mm. Like, I'm pretty sure I'm just going to record this. Oh, yeah. And start in. Sure, cut out some parts here and there that probably won't be... Important because you know I I'm stuck to an hour long. I can't upload anything more than that from the system. Dang. Yeah. Well, but, I'm um, destroying this T-bone. <laughs> um. <laughs> what was that? Other ah, activities you did as um throughout your school years. Well. Like music. You know, chess club or stuff like that. I was never really big into clubs. I was in this, like, homework club that was pretty lit because they got a really, like, late drive home on a bus. And uh, I thought the teacher was hot, so I kind of just vibed in that. And uh, I did my work. I passed everything. Um, And, yeah, I was in a band like fucking when I was 14 I was the singer in a band called Edge of Society I'm not sure if you knew that you didn't you never said the name you just said you were in a band and you were a singer for it yeah but um, the and more you know that ran until I was uh just turned 15 so it ran for about a year and then you moved up to here yep where you and I met in my first ever after school club guitar class, which honestly, I lost interest very quickly. Uh huh. I was uh, in a uh, I was in piano class, and I learned how to play the piano. What were you saying? Uh, I, I didn't say anything other than just that was the only class I lost interest. In. Mm. 
But yeah, like uh, I was in piano class. I remember it was so fun. We uh, as a class, we always went to um, like shows. We went to go see like piano shows and stuff, and I always thought that was fun. And the class was so like chill. She put the lights on, or she turned the lights off, so it was like dark. Uh, <clears throat> the only light was the light uh, that shined on our uh, keyboards. And we sat there with headphones on, and we hmm. didn't talk to anybody. We just sat there playing piano, and it was the most, like, chill thing ever. Hell yeah. Occasionally, a teacher would actually walk around and serve us, like, hot chocolate and donuts. Dude, that was like, that's like a bomb club, dude. I fucking love, it was actually a class taught at the school. It was? So, like, yeah. I had never heard of a class taught like that. And the was teacher that our school? Knew... No, that was at Mirror Lake Middle School. Okay, I was gonna say, a... wait, if, if if our school did that, how the hell did I not know about that? It was cool because the teacher actually knows my grandma because of my last name, and uh, I got like extra donuts and stuff like that, and we talked a lot. <laughs> mm, yes, middle school favoritism. <laughs> no, but um. Yeah, like, I tried uh, clubs. I just didn't like it because it just felt weird being there later than I'm supposed to be, and I just wanted to go home and play games. Because, <laughs> like, the first game I ever played, I think, was Lego Indiana Jones, or it was a Simpsons game on the PS2. No. Oh, dude. That, no, it was it was a GTA game on PS2. I but mean, I the Simpsons game it. was kind of like GTA. Yeah, it was. But I think it was GTA 3 is what I played the fir first, and then I discovered it. Then my mom got mad at my dad for letting me play it, so my dad bought me, like, WWE games. And that's kind of where I figured out the their controls, for that games have controls, and I started learning them. Mm hmm But, uh, yeah. How long have you been into video games? I've been into video games since I can even remember. Exactly, Cause same was, here, same. Because I grew up um, with my brother. My brother was really fond of me as a, like when I was a baby growing up. That's why like my mom was always working. I never had a dad. So my brother, his favorite pastime was to uh, sit me down in front of a TV and I'd watch him play video games. And as I grew up, he, like, periodically actually taught me how to play. And, uh, as he got new consoles, I got all his hand-me-downs. So, like, when I, like I said, when I was in kindergarten, I got a, uh, PSP. I had a PS2, GameCube, Wii. I had shit tons of consoles. And I fucking loved video games. And then, <laughs> growing up, I still love them. And each time they release a game... I like to compare it to the games in my past because it's so nostalgic. Yeah. Cause <clears throat> that's like even if yeah. so, like a game is a million times better than the first game you ever played, for some reason you're gonna enjoy the first game you ever played just because it's the fact it's the first game you ever played. Yeah. It just has first some game, sort of weird trick to you. First game I ever play like first game I ever played and beat was a uh, Sly Cooper. It's the, really good. The first Thank one you. for me yeah. was um, Lego Indiana Jones because I just nonstop played it. And my um, favorite part up... of it was unlocking Han Solo after going to the secret uh, Star Wars location in it. Oh, yeah. It was so cool going there and seeing Chewie. And I was like, whoa. Dude, like, the first Sly Cooper I fell in love with because I remember my mom actually came home from work one day and sometimes she'd come home like it became like a regular thing like a week or every couple of weeks she'd uh come home from work and i remember back when gamestop had a tray out on the front um the front thing and these trays had uh each video like each console um company and she would give me the ps2 games which were in those like little uh paper disc cases yeah the little yellow ones yeah dude and i vaguely like, remember them but i just remember like them being like i was like um they felt a lot like um 
like a paper bag mixed together with like what they used to wrap around a, like a burger you get from McDonald's. It was a yeah. combination between that. It was weird. It was like crinkly and papery. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, mom would bring me home like three or four, and I remember there was one night where uh, she brought me home like late at night, and she was uh, she came into my room, woke me up, was like, "I got you four games. You are not to know uh, what they are, uh, what kind of games they are, or you're not to play them until the morning." And I'm like, "Oh," and I I actually like surprises, so she literally put it in my toy box at the time, and I was just like, "Oh, I need to sleep." I don't need sleep. I need answers. I need sleep, and, not uh, answers. I remember the games were, uh, were the first Terminator, or not Terminator, uh, Tomb Raider. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first Tomb Raider, there is this cool like game where you play as this like lizard gecko guy. Um, then there was Time Splitters for the GameCube, and then I Ninja. Which, I'm not sure if you know that game, but I Ninja was the shit. I, I haven't heard of I Ninja, but the other games sound very familiar. Uh, no, I've, I remember um, the, the first and the third one you said. The second one hits me blank right now, and I never heard of the fourth mm. one. But, uh... Like, but t take some of, like, those games in early development and, like, compare to modern day, low quality mm -hmm. but still good in our opinion. And just think of the new generation playing these newer games for the first time. I know. As, like, a first and game. I... Then it just goes. Like, I fucking pity people playing games like Sly Cooper or other games like Ratchet and Clank and stuff. I pity them. Or not pity wrong word i fucking envy them because they're playing something for the first time and i'm like please enjoy it it's i wish i could play my favorite game for the first time again and that transitions into the next thing who okay what was a key element through gaming that you picked up on that helped you in society. What do you mean? Like, what did you learn from playing video games could helped you develop more when talking to other people or finding, like, friends? What um, part of it? Probably strategy. Like, the, it gave me the ability to strategize. Same. For some reason, games always give you the ability to multitask and then, like, strategize and think about everything you got in your inventory. On you. Mm -hmm. Or strategize how to get out of a situation. Yeah, like, um, let's take a, a good looting game, for example. Like, Borderlands. Borderlands, or, um, I think Zelda's a good looter game, too, right? It's a looter. Mm -hmm. Then there's, yeah. like, Dying Light, and then, oh, I could go on and on. But those games, when you play looter games, it kind of trains your brain just to hold on to a lot of stuff you might never need mm -hmm. but just to have them in case the rare opportunity you do need it because you don't know what to expect yeah you could keep track of one thing while having to focus on another thing it's weird but the normal people will like have to focus on one thing and get caught off guard by something it's just like we knew that was there but um what's your favorite game of all time Ooh. This relates back to the first game you ever played will always remain probably the favorite just because it's just the feel of first time playing it. Yeah. And... I was just asking because I figured it that didn't apply to you because... Uh... Uh, it applies to me, but at the same time, it's like there's other games I've played that come on that exact par level with it. Mm-hmm. So... Like, I, I, I played WB games, and I played GTA, but I didn't actually experience the games. But I yeah. fully experienced LEGO Indiana Jones, because I managed to play it on my own and figure a lot of stuff out, and how, a pro like, a massive mechanic would work. And so, LEGO Indiana Jones will always have a special place in my heart. And the second game that came out, that went with mm -hmm. uh, the, the fourth movie. Still a really good game. I only got to play it once and never beat it, sadly. But, um... 
I'd say what goes up there with it. Hmm. Um, for me, Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare, the original. Mm -hmm. Because of the fact that that was a time before I was able to play online or play with friends. I just went home and played games, and I didn't know. I had no idea there was a Modern Warfare 2 or Modern Warfare 3. So yeah. when it, when Modern Warfare first came out, like COD 4 first re released, I played it, played through the story numerous times, just enjoying it. And then I like I think somewhere like around 2012, 2013, I discovered there were sequels. Mm -hmm. So I'm wanting to say about maybe four, th th four to four to five years is how yeah. long I think it was. It took me four to five years to find out that there was more games. And then around 2014, Call of Duty Ghosts came out. And I then I got that. And then I stopped buying Call of Duties. But, uh, for, for like a long time. But, um, I would say is like, you know, because I, I stuck to playing at home alone, replaying the same stuff over, over and over a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, COD 4. Uh, and, um, there was one other forget the name of it hmm I think it was uh, rather uh, Minecraft for PlayStation 3 edition or um, or another Lego game either way it's like I don't have a specific favorite it's it's mm -hmm. on par for like a top three type of category well, uh, I wasn't, like, the biggest fan of uh, LEGO games growing up, but, like, like ironically, adults would think that um, LEGO games are, you know, kid games. Actually, the more I grew up, the more I appreciated and enjoyed LEGO yeah. games. I think... Mom got me Lego Batman, like the first one when it first came out because I really That's liked. That's what the game was. It was Lego Batman, dude. The yeah. first Lego Batman was so fun. I had no idea what I was doing, but I enjoyed. It. Yeah, because I remember playing the demo, and Mom was like, "Hey, it's like one of your uh, comic books." I'm like, "Yeah, in Lego form." So she got it for me, and I'm like, "Dude, it's so fun, Batman." <laughs> Cause I remember Robin had different suits and stuff. Yeah, that's right. And I think that that's the one where you can go to the Batcave. Uh huh. And then well, the uh, one you can go to the Batcave, I think, was the second one. No. Cause in that one, you could ride around oh. town. Yeah, but uh, uh, the the main like uh, HUD that you'd go to in between levels to select a mission to play. Yeah. That would be the uh the Batcave, and then you do like a thing that would bring you to the prison layer. That's how you access the villain stories. Uh huh. Game that was ahead of its time. Had a lot of content. Okay. Um, uh, segwaying from how it helped you make friends to how it affected relationship findings. This made sense. Well, um, I remember. Well, obviously, that's how I found you. Is mentioning my interest in uh, Dead by Daylight. <laughs> yeah, that one was hilarious. I just kind of sat there and you mentioned, I was like, oh, more friends. More people you're to play like, with. You're like, more? Another boy! I must catch you. It was like the um the one clip of the guy eating the M&Ms with like, the dentist thing in the mouth. I was like, more! <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, that was that was a fun day. I know. You just, like, very, like, ominously slid a paper towards me and was like, um, add me on PlayStation. Welcome, or welcome to the club. To the, welcome to the club. <laughs> it was like I just got initiated into fucking Mafia. <laughs> or Men in Black. <laughs> Men in Black. Uh, yeah, and then you, then you got introduced to Dan and you discovered that Caden, someone you met... Way before you went to that school, was went to that school with us. Well, uh, 
I actually knew that from the start. That he's the reason why I went to Tila, and he was either Colony or Tila. And uh, I I remember because my ex girlfriend used to make fun of Caden because he wore a Tealand shirt, and she'd be like Tealand. Caden would be like, "Oh, stop it." I remember how like bipolarly emotional Caden was with everything. Because <laughs> one moment in like uh, this is all drama class. Cause it's the only class I had with him. But he, like one moment he'd be like fucking pissed off, just mm, chill down, kind of sad. For some reason that he's like fuck you. Like I remember <laughs> Snap, uh, like off and on. The first day I met Caden, I remember like me and him would like talk shit to each other, and. uh... <laughs> We, me, him, my best friend Michael, and uh, Caden's cousin Tyler, we all walked to Eagle River, which was like uh, a pretty like big hike, but it wasn't that far from um, Chugiak where we lived. And uh, we walked to Eagle River, we did some shit, and as we were walking back, me and Caden kind of bonded. Because I mentioned something about hentai. And then we started talking about different kind of porns we liked. Hentai. And uh, other shit. And uh, yeah. It was great. And then we went back to Michael's house. And we played video games with his brother. It's kind of weird how like it just comes kind of full circle. Yeah. Small like, world. In seventh grade, Caden and I became buddies. Then Daniel left after seventh grade, and all I had was Caden. And then you show up, and I was like, "Hey, yeah." And then we convinced Caden to get DVD, and then he stopped playing it because we stopped playing it. Mm-hmm. What's up, Caden? <clears throat> we were just talking about how me and you met. Oh god. <laughs> yeah, yeah podcast stuff, you know. Oh, I messed that up. Alright, I'm in another fight with another uh Colossi. Wow. Nice. Which one this time? Um I found the one that you were talking about, the bull. Oh yeah. That dude was not the funnest thing to look up against. Okay, so um this Kaden... motherfucker is staring at me. Yeah. What was uh what was the first video game you played? Uh, Doom. Like no, Doom or so like I... the original? Yep. PC Doom. Or so I was told. I take it with a grain of salt. Which, dad... What's the first one you remember playing? Ooh. This weird plug and play for uh Star Wars. Bat and Battlefront two for the PS two. That's a classic. That's a good one. It's pretty good. Uh, Aha, I'm on you, bitch. But yeah, well, we were on the subject and how uh, video games has uh, brought Logan with like relationships, friendships, and all that. But uh, what, what about you, Caden? How has uh, playing video games affected you finding friends or getting girlfriends or whatever? All right. I hope you were joking about the second part, but, uh, definitely playing games, you know, it's a community. Like, I got a group of friends just from playing Counter-Strike, or Team Fortress, Halo. That was a big one. Halo's gonna have a place in everyone's heart, even if you didn't play it. Yeah, it was, but basically just the communities are really good. Yeah. Well, back then, now they're just toxic as shit. Well, like, Twitch is a big thing for me, because I'm a part of, like, six Twitch communities. Papa John. And... Yep, Papa John. I'll get to that later on. Now, um, and I mentioned the girlfriend's part because obviously it's going to be a very broad thing that will oh, probably no. mostly be around okay. Logan. So I kind of left that open for more stories. <laughs> yeah. So, Logan. Yo. How has video games affected you getting girlfriends? Well, I, uh... Oh, I died. I got a girlfriend back when I played esports for a team on a game called Battle of the Immortals. I met a girl on my team. And I remember her family actually flew out to Cali where I lived and me and her actually like hit it off and then it became a thing. And then not even like a few months after then 
Yeah. Uh, I almost dated Jade. Yeah. Because of our interest in Bethesda games. I'll be right back. Fallout and stuff. Go on. Yeah, yeah like, Fallout. Yeah, Fallout. Uh, and I remember uh, the thing with Jade was um, I told her I have Skyrim, and she said she wanted to come over and play it. Which I need to take her up on that offer. I need to take you up on the offer of hanging out as well. We should all hang out, play some Skyrim. That'd be awesome. Yo, we gotta find a way to get modded Skyrim. That's the best way to play. Dude, we can get modded Skyrim legally because all we need are some Skyrim points or Bethesda points or whatever. Oh, they allow it. Yep. <laughs> but um. Uh, hmm, what else is, is here? Uh, um, uh, uh, my notes kind of ran out. Um, improvise, improvise. <laughs> okay, how was, how was it like moving? How did it affect you? Well, in Chugak, or uh, in uh, moving from what, from California to here? Start there. Well, uh, from California to here, I had uh, some really good friends in California, but only like one. I think I burned a couple bridges, and uh, like they were really, really good friends. And then um, I left them, which kind of made me sad. I had two pet rats that uh, I named Pinky and Techno, and I gave them to that really good friend before I left. I didn't want them to die. And, uh... So that didn't really affect me too much, because I, was, I wasn't I was in the prime of my years of having friends yet, so... Yeah. And then, uh, you moved up here, and how was it different for you when you moved up to here? Well, uh... When I moved up here... Dude... I was so sad. I hated uh, moving up here at first because I have friends down in Chugiak that uh, I still talk to, and we're probably gonna hang out soon. But um, yeah, they're they're my buddies, like my best friend Michael. What what was um, the exact road that on in time, chronological order and a timeline, and what how things went for you when you moved from Chug from Chugiak to here? Uh, well. Um, so what had happened was, is we were looking for places for a while, and I remember there's a few girls I was talking to, and I dated a few when I lived in Chugiek, who lived up here, so I was like, oh, it can't be too bad. But it, and, oh, uh, how wrong he was. <laughs> no, like, just, I missed Chugiek because everything was so together. And literally, it took me two minutes to get to EJ and Jathan's house, and it was like a five-minute longboard ride to Michael's. Mm -hmm. And Caden, uh, Caden's dad lived just down the road from Michael's house, so every Friday we would try to hang out. So, uh, you're still a strapping young lad. Sure. I'm sitting here in a Deadpool onesie with blue boxers over it. That's not as bad. I'm pretty sure I've shit in here twice. But, um... Hmm. I'm trying to think of a se good segue. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, you knew, you knew, um, you knew some girls you were talking to a lot, and some of them you dated, and you thought it couldn't be that bad? Well, uh... Yeah. How did that go for you? Well... Uh, I don't really, like, talk to them as much anymore because a couple of them I broke up with and stuff. And, uh... That happens. Some people don't talk anymore after a breakup. Yeah. Some people. Not all. Sneaky. What's up? Hello? <laughs> that scared the shit out of me. <laughs> Holy <laughs> fuck. <laughs> what? I'm gonna have to edit that out because I can't have the N-word in the video. Well, no, I he's a black dude. Not like anyone else can know that. Or not, not everyone else is he's gonna. Just black man. 
What? Don't you have a picture of Julius in post? Couldn't you just edit in a picture? <laughs> I'm pretty sure I don't want to post a picture of Julius on the internet. I don't think black man cares. Yeah, I know, but at the same time, it's supposed to be a podcast about your story. Next year's... In your total time of being up here, how many people have you dated? No clue. Um, I, I probably couldn't count. What all do you remember? Well, I remember uh, since Tiff, I've only ever had like one good love, or one like real one. Ah, uh, that's and, fair. Uh, I dated the other one for like two and a half years. We don't mention the name though. We we, we don't mention. No, uh, I can. It's uh, all right. So Logan, how was your black first ball. ever relationship go? <laughs> My first ever relationship, like I had absolutely like. My, uh, with my I dog. say, my my first like actual relationship, or like, the first relationship I've ever had with a girl. The first girlfriend, legitimately. Well, uh, uh, it was all right. Like uh, back then, I was in like a little emo phase, and I guess she was a little emo as well. Yeah. Negro Two negatives can make a positive. <laughs> Yep. Two Negroes can make. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was a really, it was a really good relationship, and uh, I you got me too. But you have all things in life that you regret or miss, but nothing's nothing good lasts forever. <laughs> so, no, but um, it seems like with your first relationship, you got fairly lucky. Found, found a good so. person. Huh? I'm Didn't treat you like shit? Sounds like a win to me. In two and a half years, that's not bad for a relationship in the fourth grade. Damn, boy! In the fourth grade, I never for the had a fourth grade, but damn. I, I had, I basically I had to had double that in order to get one. Happen. So that your first one went pretty well, and uh, now you're with Tiff. It's going even better, from what it sounds. Yeah, just sometimes having a relationship is just, yeah, like, a lot of the time I just want to be single, <laughs> but, um... You, yeah, you feel restricted, obligated yeah. to do stuff, yeah, that's, I, I know that. Well, it's not, like, obligation, I'll do anything, but, uh, it's, you know... It's... You kind of feel like that you're, there's a, some sort of negative response to what something you want to do. Yeah. Or if you don't do something, it's just like... I don't know, getting into a serious relationship, honestly, is like a wing clipper. What is the craziest party night you've had? Craziest party night? Like, you know, getting together with people, or just an overnight thing. What is the craziest moment to happen? I only get well, uh, when I was talking about my friends in Chugiak, probably... There was a night where Michael, Jathan, and another friend, Max, we all, like, kind of, uh, hung out outside, and we siphoned gas out of an old, uh, car, um, that was on Jathan's property, and we decided to, like, engrave shit in the road next to Jathan's property, and, uh, fucking, the, f like, the fire got so big <laughs> that... Uh, fucking wa uh, we tried putting water on it, but that just mixed in with the gas, so there was, like, liquid fu fire fucking going towards the forest, so we had to put it out quick. <laughs> that sounds like a very big adrenalina rush. It was fun, but, god, I love those, I miss those crazy nights. How, how has high school gone for you, Logan? Well, uh, high school... Been really just, eh. like I feel alive, but I'm not actually living in high school. I'm kind of just there. Yeah, you feel like you got already, all the fun stuff already kind of happened. It's just kind of starting to de the decline for everything. Well, I feel like that the high high school is the thing that begins my life. Like right now, I I've been like really shitty. All this, like, virus stuff going on has been, like, kind of like an eye-opener. It's been more helpful. Yeah. Because, like, as you know, I'm not too worried about this whole thing. 
Because yeah, my terminal yeah. cancer has gone to my kneecaps. Yeah, let's let's save the virus stuff for uh, the next subject. But um, yeah. no, but like I'm saying is like all the fun stuff for high school's already happened, and there's nothing really else that's gonna be fun about high school for you. Well, I don't know. We haven't experienced our senior years yet. Dude, I don't think my senior years ain't gonna go anywhere. <laughs> I think my fun's already come and left. Like for, for me, high school started off on an odd note. Something I'm not used to. Mm. I, it's certainly something I didn't expect. Is probably a better way to put it. But uh, when I went as the year school, progressed, it slowly went down and down. It started, so it started off in such a high note that everything else kind of just got downplayed by it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, sophomore year, or th this current year for us, it's been fairly neutral. It's had its ups and its downs. It's been really... It's been like a heartbeat monitor, kind of. Because mm -hmm. I, I don't really know what to think about anything. Nothing really special happens. Nothing... For me, at least, nothing unique. Like... I don't know. Uh... Sophomore year seems kind of calm. Nobody messes with with me, at least. Nobody messes with me. Everyone leaves me alone. I do my own thing. Yeah. Um, same time, also, there's not enough going on. It's kind of like, what the hell, man? And then, uh... Yeah, freshman year really downplayed sophomore year for me. Yeah, freshman year was shitty. This year is just okay. It's certainly better, but yet not as enjoyed because all the crazy stuff that entertained all of us happened freshman year. All the crazy yeah. retards. And I will say though that freshman year was a lot less stressful for some of the what was it? The um, elective classes. Because mm. for the yearbook class, I had it every single day for the entire year, and I did one thing for the entire thing and I got an A. I got a hard A. Always 100% ever since then. Yeah. And it's like, you know, I regret getting that grade. But at the yeah. same time, I'm happy I got the grade because I didn't have to do shit for the rest of the entire year. Because I literally sat there on my phone the entire class afterwards because I got an A and he didn't change it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. If I had a choice to go back and change it I don't know I'm still debating whether or not I would have yeah but just for the fact that um, it's a it's a class and it ended up not being worth it in the end all it was just wasted time and I got a grade for effort I might undo it mm -hmm. just because the other result probably could have been more rewarding if I didn't do it but yeah, no, um, so far, um, sophomore year socially has been worse. Mm -hmm. Uh, easy education-wise, better. Yeah. Uh, because, well, first things first, to clear it out of the way, if I probably didn't have a girlfriend freshman year, this year would probably be better. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that, that just got bonus points. That's just how I'm seeing it. I've had, according to what people tell me, I've had no, numerous opportunities, and I just didn't take it. I really uh, don't I, th care. I think Logan told me like three times in like eighth and beginning of freshman year, very beginning, what? that I had like numerous opportunities and didn't take it. Yeah. <laughs> he started getting annoyed with me. I was like, what? I, I, what? He was like, yeah, no, for you. Like, what's an opportunity? <laughs> <laughs> Speak English. And he was like, no, you got to understand my English. And I started speaking German to him. <laughs> you remember that when you started getting aggressive? So I just started speaking to German to make everything sound aggressive. And really, I was saying the ambulance is coming. I forgot to fuel up my car with gas. <laughs> That's literally what I said, but it sounded like I was threatening you. <laughs> That's what German sounds, though. But, um, anyways, yeah. Uh, a, a lot more laid back would certainly be way better than freshman year socially if I didn't have a girlfriend for a portion of it. The virus came along, right? So we had spring break begin normally. 
and right towards the end of spring break, right when it was going to end, we we're going to go back to school. School got canceled. Uh -huh. Yes, and, until it got March canceled. 30th. I'm so happy. And we were gonna, and then we just kind of sat there, and then we found out about a week later we were going to start doing online classes, and. I wasn't stoked about it. I was just I got more stressed out by the fact of having to do everything at home, having no idea what the hell to expect from these teachers. Because it's just like going back to school again, except you already know who they are. You already know what you're going to learn. It's just not knowing what the teacher's going to assign to you when, according to my, my English teacher, the teachers aren't supposed to assign a lot of stuff. Yeah. But, um... Teachers a lot of stuff. Mm, maybe like a book or so. Students a lot of stuff. Five pages. Honestly, or that three. is a lot of stuff for me. That was five pages of book. Mm. Yeah, no. No, but um, it is. it's freaking. Like the point is, like my my English teacher at least. I think Ju Julius. Yeah, yeah. Julius has the same English teacher, um, because they're the same world history teacher. But uh, she said that she won't be assigning many assignments nor having a harder assignments. And she already gives fairly easy assignments as is. And the only hard assignment she gives out is, like, read a book over the course of the entire quarter and then, like, tell me what? a quick brief summary of it. Wait, who? Miss hmm. Johns? No. No, Harris. Oh, Miss Johns is a good teacher. Yeah. And how has this quarantine affected you? Uh, it hasn't affected me at all besides my opinion on it uh, on fucking humanity because of how they're reacting to it yeah. but like, uh, you not being able to go out as often and see people people aren't allowed to come see you as often i mean i don't have that restriction because i have this thing with my parents now is that as long as i keep myself clean and i stay away from like physical contact except for like with my girlfriend which i have no or the homies or the homies i'm just kidding no. but <laughs> Um, I'm just like if we hug each other and that's fine, but uh, or you know, the special handshake or the the jerk off circle. Oh, wait, no, we can't make no, no. <laughs> the jerk off circle. That, that's pretty gay. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's pretty gay. But uh, yeah. Um. So honestly, I just keep myself inside because, you know, I like being by myself. I like playing games and just being yeah. inside and. This break from school is actually really helping a lot of kids and yeah. me, especially with uh, stress. Yeah, uh, yeah, I've, that, that's like the key thing. This, like every, all the students are like relieved of so much stress, and the school's like, no, nope, we're gonna make you learn everything at home. Get that, mm -hmm. and everyone's just like, why? Well, no, it's like okay. it's less stressful. We don't have to wake up at fucking seven in the morning just to go to school and yeah. sit there and stare at a. I get an extra three hours teacher. of sleep. That's all I get. Dude, I get to do it and learn at my own pace, and that's why that's yeah. why I appreciate, and I'm gonna take advantage of that. It's very eye opening. I feel like this entire virus, my opinion on it is, it's it's an opportunity for the planet to heal, because population levels have gone down. I heard pollution. the ozone is starting to yeah, yeah pollution too. Yeah, the pollution. And uh, did I say population? That's kind of <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> I did okay, I meant pollution. Like but yeah, not, population you're... as well. Yeah, you're not wrong. <laughs> uh I went to three bears the other day and they said limit two items per household of everything in the store. I tried to get three caramels because they have like the best kind of caramel there at three bears. I no, wanted to get two. three and they were like limit two per person. I'm like, you faggot. I want caramel. <laughs> I know, I'm buying it, you're <laughs> you're profiting No, but it's their it. way of making sure that everybody can survive. Cause, oh, you know what the, you know okay. what the hilarious thing is? Hmm. The box was completely full. <laughs> yeah, because everyone's going for the essential needs. No, but, uh, yeah, just... but then there's me, just little yeah. old me, who wants a fucking boysenberry flavored caramel made here in Alaska. You I want what? it. Okay. If you're ever gonna get get something some Alaskan made goods, you gotta get the Moose's Tooth Root Beer. For some reason, something about it. I love really Moose's Tooth Root. Yeah. The pizza is really good too. I haven't had their pizza yet. All right, Dude, so Julius. Dude, they have giant fucking pizzas. Damn. Well, uh, Julius, 
How has the quarantine affected you? What are your thoughts on it? Well, it's actually made my life better. What do you think of the situation globally and not just school related? Uh, gamers are making the internet worse. No. <laughs> the like, memers are memeing and making it harder on the internet. It's harder for the media to make the, the, this quarantine sound bad with all the memers making jokes and pointing out numerous things yeah. about it. Because now like, the media community is split down in two, the political media and the meme media. And a lot more of the meme media actually knows what's going on. Like maybe eight different people. And then all of them are co- like during this quarantine are coming to like personal like realizations that help themselves like, out. Major changes coming to them. Like the, yeah, they're, they're making massive break moves. From school. Yeah, like during this giant quarantine, they've already made massive decisions that are changing their life from home. Already. already. It's weird. Like some some people are like Taking up a new profession, finding out they're really good at it. Some people are just like, "Hey, I don't want to date this guy anymore, so I'm just gonna dip on him." Because now I realize, after thinking all this, he ain't cool. And I'm like, "Ah, okay." And then I move on. Yeah, because once you sit in a room for long enough, you're gonna think about stuff. Oh yeah, once your you brain's gonna thinking. explode with ideas yeah. and thoughts, and like, it's like, "Wait, why didn't I do that before? Wait, this doesn't seem like a good idea to me. Good idea to me." Wait, I can finally do this one thing. Wait, I'm actually really good at this. Wait, maybe I should actually try this instead. Like, all these different things that can change about everyone. It's, it's, it's a strange time. The earth is getting better. Everyone's mental state is getting better. This could be like a dark age slash, slash renaissance type parents. event. Parents, they're, they're not oh, doing yeah, so well. Yeah. Well, this is basically the other... Uh, Dark, the Black Plague in the Dark Ages with Wi-Fi. Yeah. With Wi-Fi, yeah. <laughs> like, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, when it comes to adults and how it's affecting me, um, so a lot of people got laid off from their jobs because of the fact that there's just no money coming through, like, everyone's at home, nothing's happening. Um, for how that affected me is that uh, the company my mom works at was – they're they're laying off the highest paid person in each of their buildings, and it just happened to be that my mom got laid off. So now she's filing for unemployment until she can find a job after the quarantine, which is like oof, but at least she ain't infected. Well, I definitely wanna, you know, um, I definitely wanna do more with my channel. Yeah, I could. Yeah, that's that seemed like a, a important thing to you, and you haven't been really able to upload during this quarantine, have you? Well, I've actually had a couple of video ideas. It's just that there's just a matter of uh, actually getting it on to the, or yeah, going into production. I, there's videos I need to edit, then there's videos I need to film, and then edit, film, edit, film. You still got that forest video in the, in the works too, don't you? Yeah. That's I don't edit ever. any of my stuff. Um, yeah, the reason why I say a month long is that's just about how long my one relationship went. So as long as they can get each a month in, I, I, I can die a happy man. I'd be happy getting mauled by a bear and accepting it. As long as they get a fair try on, dude. Yeah, as long as they get decent time... And to be able to figure things out and understand it, because I'll tell you one thing: beforehand, I had I, I didn't exactly understand Logan's point of view of everything, and after a month, I kind of understood exactly everything, <laughs> nearly. And I say that's fair. I'd say a month is all you need in order to understand and decide whether or not you are ready. Mm-hmm. And at that point, Dan, Randy, and Kate can decide whether they are ready or not. And out of all of them, I'm guessing Cade's going to be the first one. Mm-hmm. Cade's got the natural just get along with everybody and comedic personality to him. But it's impossible for him not to. Yeah. 
What's uh what's a last thought you have before we close this out? Uh that school is shit. That's fair. Alright. Fair run at home. Before enjoy your time. Enjoy your quarantine, because well, it's gonna be hard to kinda of do that after a while because you're gonna eventually run out of ideas. And trust me, ideas can go a long ways, but there's not a lot of them. Right? All right, looking. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. See. Yeah. But um, in the end, yeah. know this: good things will come, good things will go. Good things never last forever. It's not about what happens in the past; it's all what happens in the now. This is the best fate seven nine signing off.